In this case is a set of completely rehoused Soviet lenses. Not something I would have even considered three years ago. But things have changed over time. Vintage Soviet SLR lenses transformed to modern Soviet cinema lenses made possible by the collaborated efforts of iron glass adapters and vintage lens for video. With vastly improved ergonomics for professional video shooters, while maintaining and in many ways improving upon the original optical charm and character they become famous for. Now I've aptly named this set the Soviet Sisters. And they're a deadly refracting force whose reputation has made them, shall we say, highly sought after. Now based on all this, I should have expected it because it wasn't long after I had received the set before they came looking for them. Well, it didn't quite happen like that. I, I may have exaggerated it just a bit. It is a creative medium after all. Now I think introductions are in order. Now the core of this lens dates back to the Soviet Union 1958, where the KMZ factory produced the first Mir 1B. Like many Soviet lenses of the time, its optical formula is derived from German DNA. In this case, the Carl Zeiss Jena Flektagon 35mm f2.8. It's an extremely popular wide or mid-range lens in particular because of its unique flaring. Now, because of the rehousing, certain modifications are able to be made to this lens. The biggest one being the original minimum focusing distance of 0.7 meters has been improved down to 0.57 meters making it a bit more versatile than the original, especially for close-ups. With a field of view of 60 degrees on a full-frame sensor, the lens has a standard 270-degree focus throw, eight aperture blades in its diaphragm, an f-stop range between f2.8 to f16, and a standard lens barrel diameter of 95 millimeters. A lens that really needs no introduction. The Helios 44-2 is one of the most popular and adored lenses in history. Also produced in the KMZ factories near Moscow, its optical formula is based on the legendary Zeiss Biotar 58mm f2.0. Most famous for its swirly bokeh and great sharpness, the rehoused version of this lens improves its functionality tenfold for video shooting. With a field of view of 40 degrees on a full frame sensor, the lens also has a 270 degree focus throw. Eight aperture blades, although iron glass can customize this to include 15 aperture blades. An f-stop range between f2 to f16, and a standard lens barrel diameter of 95 millimeters. 
Now I did a full review already on the Rehouse 58 millimeter here if you want to take a look at all the reasons I fell in love with this lens and how it sold me on this set. The last, but certainly not least, of the Soviet sisters is the Jupiter 9 85mm f2.0. Its German roots are from the Carl Zeiss Sonar. This lens shares common ground with its other two sisters, but one of its biggest features is the 15-blade aperture, which renders very circular bokeh throughout the f-stop range. With a 28-degree field of view on a full-frame sensor, it's got an aperture range from f2 to f16, a 270 degree focus row, and a standard lens barrel diameter of 95 millimeters. Now each of these rehouse lenses are machined metal, and the quality is top notch. They really do feel like a brand new set. Now the industry standard focus row is perfectly weighted and smooth, and it works nicely with electronic focus systems or mechanical ones. Now the same can be said for the aperture ring. Overall, the rehousing really optimizes these lenses for a professional video workflow. Shooting yourself on this stuff is tricky! <laughs> Now one thing I was curious about is how these lenses would work as a set. Now traditionally when you're looking at cinema lenses, you're looking for a set with a physical uniformity to help make lens swapping and matte box fitting efficient. Now these were machined with that in mind. Standard focus gears, aperture rings, a front diameter of 95 millimeters on each with a 92 millimeter filter thread inside makes for a very efficient workflow on your project. Now more importantly, you want a set whose color matches fairly well between the focal lengths. Soviet lenses in particular had a bit of a shoddy reputation for quality control. Different variants, different coatings, different factories with different sets of standards. You'd almost think that they would work terribly as a set. But they don't. A simple side-by-side -side comparison reveals very little in the way of color variation between all three lenses which makes color grading between them a walk in a snowy forest, or very easy. Here's why I can't have sunglasses in this shot. Hi, hi, hi. Now the unique image characteristics for each focal length work nicely together as well. Now I was told the reason for this is when Iron Glass sources these lenses, they're looking for the best. They also conduct strict optical tests to ensure the quality of the glass itself because there really is no value building an expensive and functional housing around a FUBAR lens. Now I should mention that these rehousings don't use an internal focus mechanism, so the barrel of the lens will extend or contract slightly when focusing. Now part of this was done to keep the price of the rehousing down, because internal focusing is more complicated and more expensive to produce. Plus, there are certain limitations internal focusing brings to the lens performance, such as limiting coverage the lens can have. Now, I did hear internal focusing is being developed as a higher tier option, so stay tuned for that. If it's one thing I've learned working in video is that people need and like different things depending on what they shoot. Now that said, I can't really say what you need, so I'm not gonna do that. I can't tell you why I got them though. Now, first thing is easy. I adore vintage lenses, full stop. The history, the story behind them, the way they render an image, all that jazz just gets me fired up to shoot with them. And when you're actively engaged and inspired, that's when you produce your best work, or at least attempt to produce your best work. Now, since I started shooting with vintage lenses, I've been looking for ways to adopt them to my professional film and television workflow. Now, I do run my own production company, and while I do mostly post-production work for network film and television series, the production side of things, particularly new series development, has been something I've been doing a lot more of lately. Now, a big part of that process is convincing others on certain creative directions, whether to save money or time. They're showing a few skeptical directors these lenses might be met with some pushback. Now showing them these lenses, you'll have a very different conversation, I promise you. It's happened to me. It, it's weird, but optics matter on the surface. Now for me, these are 100% a professional investment, one that over time should be able to generate a revenue. 
Now, based on the cost and functionality of this set, I don't think they're meant for the casual enthusiast. You can achieve a similar end result with a set of these lenses in their original form, and you can even mod those further to improve their video functionality. All right, well, that's it for this video. If anyone has any questions regarding this set, please let me know. Happy to answer. Now, if you're interested in these lenses, definitely go check out Iron Glass Adapters and Vintage Lens for Video, as they have all the answers and the entire roadmap of where all this is going. Canon FDs, what? <clears throat> <clears throat> They're doing wonderful things for the Vintage Lens community, and yeah, I'm just a satisfied as f customer. <laughs> Oops, I mean to say the F word. Did I get it? Ooh. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in a sec. I bet you thought I forgot about this. Heck no, this is my favorite part, giveaway. So long story short, when I ordered the 37 and 85 millimeter after falling in love and proposing to this little slice, I was gonna exchange this older variant, the number three of the assembly line of the orange tag version for the newer one because so that the whole set would match. They said I should keep this one and use it in a giveaway. And since I just hit 30,000 subscribers, I thought what better time to do that than now? So I'm giving this lens away 30 days from now. Details on how to enter are in the description below, so get it, because I know you want it. Just a warning, this beautifully constructed piece of glass and metal might make you spring for the full set, just saying. Oh yeah, and shipping international as well, so don't worry about it, I'll handle that. I know people in the postal service. And when you control the mail, you control information. <laughs> Good luck, everybody. See you next time. Am I even in focus? I can't even tell. I better check. Okay. And that's a cut.